wow, our Bitcoin analysis was on point. Yeah, we projected in advance, likely to go from 50,000 down to 40,000. This technical analysis stuff really works. I use the three key things, momentum, Elliott Wave and Fibonacci to give you the edge. Bitcoin is now forming the next textbook chart pattern that you must be aware of that we're going to cover in today's video. So if you like today's content, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. If you don't know me by now, my name is Jiggy. I'm the award-winning author of The Extraordinary New Venture Capital Opportunity, How to Invest Like a Pro. Been featured in the best-selling book, High Probability Trading Strategies, back in 2008. We're only used to focus on currencies, but now exclusive on crypto. Today's focus is Bitcoin. Really serious pattern that we need to be aware of. So let's dive straight in. So this is the video we did on the 3rd of April. 3rd of April, and what we said with Bitcoin, it was just on point, on point. This is the power of Elliott Wave combined with Fibonacci. We said we're likely to be completing this ABC correction, and then we should anticipate movement to the downside. Movement to the downside, and boy, it's just like just perfect, perfect. So let's dive in to a chart. This is an hourly chart, which we're going to come back to. I want to stick on the daily chart for a second. Look at this. Right, that's what you call textbook, textbook, right? That's what we projected, and that's what happened. How cool is that? Not cool for the markets, but being able to anticipate what's likely to happen with very high probability. So if you want to learn how to do this, take my free Elliott Wave Fibonacci Masterclass. It's just second to none. Click here, instant access, video on demand, pop in your email, and Bob's your uncle. And we just covered the three secret rules that you need to know about Elliott Waves and how to use Fibonacci ratios to read the market. So now when we're looking at Bitcoin, we want to look at, right, what's happening over here? Okay, first things first. Let me just move this over here. Let me get this over here. Just going to see if I can grab this arrow. Yeah, right. So what we need to first be aware of is I like to look at the higher degree time frame momentum. You go, what is that, Jagir? We're looking at the weekly chart. And momentum indicator that I'm using something called Stochastics RSI basically is pointing down. So the overall trend is down, right? And now we've got confirmation because we've had a five wave sequence to the downside. So what I want to first do is I just want to jump to an hourly chart. So this is now a daily chart. The reason I'm going to go to an hourly chart is when we're looking at this five wave sequence to the downside, it's not it's, clear, it's pretty clear on a daily chart, but we want to see, can we just look at this on a lower time frame because then the waves tend to be even clearer, the subdivisions. And that's what I want to show you today. Because what I want you to realize, this pink box at the top right is this pink box in the bottom, bottom right now. This is now, we're looking at the same data, but on the hourly, so we see the, the, the more um, intricate movements within the market. And this can be really valuable information. I'm going to show you some really, really cool stuff. But the key thing I want you to know is the markets tend to move in fives and threes. And after a five-wave sequence, even to the downside, what we should anticipate is a three-wave movement following in the opposite direction, but it's more corrective. That's going to make perfect sense to you over the next few minutes. So now we're on an hourly chart. I can get rid of this box. So now let's just really tidy this up. Look at this. So we've got this nice movement here that looks like a clean wave one, a nice wave two, a nice wave three. It looks like a nice wave four. And it looks like we're coming towards the end of a, of a fifth wave, right? I'm just going to get rid of these lines over here so we can see it like this. Also, what's really, really valuable, it can be really, really valuable, is if we now look at this part of the sequence, which we're calling the wave three, it also breaks down to five waves. Right, and this can be really, really helpful to really see the market in this light because it gives you clues. And ideally, you you always want to get ideally two degrees of wave counts, three where it's clear. Right. So here we've got a pretty clean wave three. I just wanted to kind of break it down for you. So if this is the case, that, that was just more for for fun is what should we anticipate happening next? Is it that we should anticipate Bitcoin just continuing to the downside and making lower lows? Or are we coming towards an end of a five wave sequence and we should see some type of correction before a continuation to the downside? Now, if you're brand new to Elliott Waves, 
Fibonacci ratios, momentum indicators. It can be a lot of information. That's why I've created the Fibonacci Eliwave Masterclass. I would actually highly recommend because it's it's really important that you can see this stuff happening because Bitcoin is not only Bitcoin, it's almost like a macro indicator for the rest of the market. So do take the time, it's around 30 minutes, to take the masterclass because I covered this in depth. So because I'm going to speak in Elliott Wave language and Fibonacci, but I'll aim to keep it as simple as I can. So what we're going to do now is we're going to jump back into the daily chart. right? So the time frame is daily. And just to make it clear so we're all on the same page, is if I use candlestick chart daily just means every piece of data this represents one day it represents another day and so on and so forth right so that's what we're and we're just going to use line chart so it's clean on the downside so what i'm going to use i'm going to jump back and forth between the daily and the uh, one hour chart so we know the weekly momentum is down what is the daily momentum doing well the daily momentum is pretty much let's just see what it is exactly going to put it up like this is looking like it's going to turn bullish right it's, it's pretty clear that we're going to get a bullish reversal that means the momentum of for the next two three maybe four days it's going to be sideways to up so that's a clue that we're saying we're coming towards what looks like an end of a five wave sequence one two three four five and the immediate momentum is sideways to up so that gives us a massive clue that Bitcoin is coming towards the end of a micro five wave trend and we should anticipate some movement to the upside, but not a continuation to new highs, just a correction. And then after a correction, what typically forms is another continuation to the downside, right? That's really, really important. So now let's just jump back into an, an hourly chart, knowing this information that the momentum for the next three to five days is sideways to up, as in the the... The rhythm is, okay, there's going to probably be some buying behavior is the probability. But does that coincide with price and pattern? Okay, so let's just jump back into this hourly chart. It's going to be really valuable, really powerful. And what I'm showing you doesn't only apply to Bitcoin. It applies to other cryptocurrencies also. So what I'm going to do is now we've got, we've got a good feel for what, what this looks like. I'm even looking at this as a micro count of it looks like potentially something like this. So I don't, I don't want to overcomplicate it because there's different levels of knowing Elliott Wave. There's knowing just the, the, the core basics, but then there's subdivisions of waves, which can be very, very helpful, very, very powerful. But the main thing I want to show today is where is the likelihood of this coming towards an end before a correction. So there's something called an end of wave five Fibonacci ratio. I cover it in the masterclass. I'm going to do it quite fast. I'm just going to show you there's three particular ratios. There's 38, 62, and 100%. 32 is unlikely because we passed that already. So we've got this zone, right? And that's, that can be very, very powerful for us. Why I also want to look at is just one other thing. One other thing, uh, I just want to double check something first. Give me two seconds. I just want to see the reference point of where did the wave three, did the wave three get to 1.618? Yeah, it got to the 1.618 region. So I'm just quickly doing this. I just wanted to see on a candlestick as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So what we want to know and be aware of is wave once, and wave fives, often, especially when wave three is the extended wave, often equal each other. So I'm just going to go back to our line chart. I'm just going to show you this just very quick. I'm just going to measure this wave one. Let's do it from here. Measure wave one and project it forward from this wave four high. And the key ratios that I want is 100%. Um, 1.618 tends to be the, the maximum and 62% tends to be the minimum. So I reckon, yeah, so this is confirming when there's an overlap like this, this is confirming this is a high probability zone. I like to keep it over here if I can. Yeah, let me just keep it over here so it's nice and clean. Make sure the ratios are correct. 
Yeah, perfect. So now what we have is just a nice zone of saying this. We are likely to see an end of a micro five wave downward movement with Bitcoin. If that's the case, what should we anticipate next? Okay, well, after a five wave sequence, what tends to happen? So we're just gonna, I'm just gonna project, let's just assume um, it hasn't been confirmed yet. Let's just say Bitcoin does make a lower low and gets to 37,000 because it's in this region. Then more often than not, it would correct 50%. It's going to draw this out. 62 to 78.6%. This called a wave two. I'm just going to do a time, quick time zone as well. I like to do this because it gives me a bit of a reference that we should anticipate a few days sideways to up for Bitcoin. More often than not, it will occur in three waves, something like this. Maybe something like this. The main thing we want to be aware of if this occurs, unless, unless the price does something unusual and exceeds this high, this will be a corrective formation, meaning that we should anticipate a further movement to the downside. The weekly momentum is down. We're just going to jump back into the hourly, uh, sorry, daily chart up here. So this is the same information that we're looking at. This will more than likely coincide with the next daily bearish reversal on the momentum. And we just want to be aware of that. Hopefully that made sense. Hopefully that made sense. Um, sometimes it's difficult talking in Elliott Wave terms if you don't know Elliott Waves. So that's why I created the free Elliott Wave Fibonacci Masterclass so you can get with the lingo because this is these patterns and prices, you'll see them time and time again. So let's just summarize. I'm just going to move this to make it not visible on the daily chart, just on the hourly chart. Is we are what well, looks like forming a one, two, three, four, five on the downside. So it looks like we're coming towards the end of a five wave sequence. After a five wave sequence, we typically see some type of A, B, C style correction. There are other forms of correction, but this is the most common, most typical. So that's what we should anticipate. And we're talking about maybe three to five, maybe up to nine days, sideways to up, sideways to up. Uh, let me just double check a couple of things. Uh, I just want to have a look. Yep. Yeah, the typical minimum minimum is this zone over here. So by or before the 19th of April, um, we should be really on high alert that we might be seeing the end of a correction. And now let's just finish on a macro because what, we, what, we, what I'm trying to do here is when Bitcoin is showing massive optimism, right? In other words, if we just really zoom out with Bitcoin, when it's showing massive, obvious optimism like this, the whole market tends to do incredibly well. When it's showing massive optimism like this, the market tends to do well. But on the flip side, when it's doing this, which we also anticipated and projected in advance uh, a year ago, and when it's doing this, the markets overall on average, especially the low caps and the medium caps, they tend to just have massive corrections. Right? And we want to use that information. So what are we saying here in regards to Bitcoin? Well, the trend, the intermediate trend is down. We seem to have this correction. And we should anticipate a continuation to the downside. And we've had this first five-wave movement to the downside. We should expect a correction, another movement to the downside, correction, and one final move to the downside for potentially finishing off a larger degree correction. So then it will form something like an A, B, C, and then a continuation. If it occurs this way, you might have a window of opportunity just to tighten your stop losses, become risk-free on positions, et cetera, et cetera, during this phase, because most of the market will not know that this is a correction if it occurs this way. So most will see it as optimism that can impact other projects. So you might have a window of opportunity just to de-risk yourself, take some profits, you know, just, just be careful that that's what you want to be is, is more in defense mode right, right now. 
Um, you know, unless it breaks this high and then there's some serious optimism, but the probability because of the momentum and the pattern and the price position is likely that we're going to see a new low going below 36,000 over the coming maybe six weeks, six weeks thereabouts. So sideways to up immediately, but macro is sideways to down. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. But do take my Fibonacci and Early Wave Masterclass. You know, I actually have a full in-depth course as well, which breaks everything down into just bite-sized chunks. And if you buy that course, you'll get an invite to my private Telegram. We do weekend workshops where you can ask me to do literally technical analysis on your coins. And I'll give you my opinion based on momentum, pattern, and price. Uh, if you click here, you'll get immediate access and literally video on demand. And you can just watch the masterclass and let me know what you think. So there you have it. There you have it. That's my take on Bitcoin. You know, we... It was just on point, right? On point from the technical analysis that we did. So we want to be aware of that as well. So like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Let's finish on a quote from my book. I'm going to keep it simple today. And it is chapter two. It is Mr. Warren Buffett. Rule number one, never lose money. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. Now, the reason I wanted to choose that one today is... Part of the game of playing crypto tennis, the possibility and the probability of losing is always there, right? That's why we have stop losses. That's why we have acceptable capital exposure, risk management, and so on and so forth. But what we're aiming to do is become the casino. Again, the edge in our favor and only going in the direction of the trend. So if the overall trend is down, you either, if you've got the skill set to short the market, you short the market, or stand aside and be patient and wait. If you've got a particular positions, and they're in profit, and you know the markets are likely to come down, you can make a judgment call on should you be taking profits, should you be um, adding to your positions, or, or again, standing aside. So my personal opinion is if Bitcoin is going to likely, not guaranteed, because it's only probabilities, never certainties, to make lower lows in the immediate few weeks, six to ten weeks, then stand aside and look for the opportunities. Look for the opportunities of other coins that are really powerful, strong, solving a meaningful problem, good utility, good tokenomics, good team. And, you know, on a blockchain where there's not as much competition, so to speak. And then wait. And if there is a nice ABC kind of pattern forming, it's to wait for Bitcoin to, to really reveal its cards and is looking pretty high probability that it's likely to do what we're, what we're looking at. It's not guaranteed, but it's likely. And then just plan don't get overly aggressive. Think the long game. Think the next five years, 10 years. So we don't need to get rich tomorrow. It's about the long game and how you can manage your capital exposure. So if you like today's content, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and I'll see you very soon.